Here we go though, 22 laps are awaiting us here in Belgium. Let's get ready, five red lights and we are underway for the beginning of the Belgian Grand Prix and it looks to be a good getaway from Shanaka Klein towards turn number one. Otis Lawrence though already up the inside of Tamas Gal, who's lost many, many positions. Shanaka Klein then leads heading in towards Eau Rouge and Radion. Otis Lawrence though hot on his heels, little bit of contact, there's a bit of decent there. Otis Lawrence, oh my words, what is happening? I don't know if that's cut happened on your screen there Nathan but Otis Lawrence already sent to the back of the order Nate meanwhile Declan Barrett my surprise winner potentially in this race he'll go and take the lead well, that was, a, that was a start, wasn't it, indeed, then? So we've also got, further back, we've got lots of honor up here battling with Tamash Gal. We've got Esfan Puki battling with Keen going up there for P6 as well. But big shame for Otis on to have a bit of DC called Lag to drop him all the way down to the rear of the field. Of this race, Tamash Gal, the big story, losing so many places at the beginning of this race. And, oh, Thomas Ronner almost up the inside of his teammate there. Very close to contact between himself and Jan Halliday. But they've just about come away unscathed at the beginning of this one. The two, Aston Martins doing battle. That's Andre Tarabukin defending from Duncan Offland, who's up his inside. And now Reese Linton has a bad run through turn number one. It's chaos throughout the entirety of this field. Let's have a look, though, at the, bit at the front of the order, because Jan Ottmere is on the attack. Shanika Clay starting on those hard compound tires is going to have no chance of defending from Jan Ottmere. Definitely, I think we know around a track like this, obviously there's less laps to run, so these softs will go less laps than they would normally around other different circuits, so we can see what Yona can do. He sits back for now, and they're still quicker than Shanaka Klaes. King going up, popping himself into P3 there, ahead of Shanaka. These soft tyres still have some life in them for the McLaren Shadow Driver, and he is closing to the back of Shanaka, heading now in towards Blanchemont Corner. Shanaka Clay with not much with not much slipstream on the rear of Ishmael Fassi. Otis Lawrence will look towards the outside line at the bus stop chicane later on the brakes, and Otis Lawrence makes the move stick and gets himself back up into sixth position. Kept himself consistently in the position he's put further up, we can see literally Isfan Pugi is pushing the honor up me through in towards the next part of this circuit we can see is Isfan going to use a bit of battery to get past he's not using any battery but he's gaining in already without that battery that slipstream on the back of Yano Watme. can he make a move down in towards this next part of the circuit he's pushing the Mercedes through where does he go he sticks behind he's not keen to make a move here on the Mercedes he doesn't send it either so I'm surprised I thought he would have sent it there to be honest through in towards that corner Declan Barrett into the pits the race leader into the pit lane now we'll see what tyres he goes on to surely will be a set of medium tyres Keen Gund Keen Gund up joining him in the pits and they head back down towards 2-1 again now it's John Ottmere and they ahead of Isman Pukki ahead of Ishmael Fassi in the top three well now Jan Ottmere is going to have no DRS to defend from Isman Pukki or Ishmael Fassi with Ishmael practically attached to the rear diffuser of that Ferrari heading up the hill and through Radion Corner. What will we see heading in towards the Lacom chicane? Ishmael Fassi already applying the pressure to Istvan Puki heading down in towards the braking zone. Istvan Puki will go for that move in into the lead. Meanwhile, Ishmael Fassi and his title rival, Jan Ormir, do battle through the Lacom chicane. Ishmael Fassi makes that move stick as Jan Ormir's tyres are crying out at this point. We are also on a set of mediums with that DRS. That could also ruin Kean's race here tonight. But you can see Shanaka Clay go for a move to the outside of Otis Lawrence in towards Blanchemont. These two had battle earlier on for the lead. This time it's for P4 in towards the chicane. It's the move done for Shanaka Clay to pop himself into the top four. Now, do we see on what mere pit? Yes, we do. Do we see Otis Lawrence pit? We do so now. It is from Puki leads ahead of Ishmael Fassi, ahead of Shanaka Clay in the top three. But the issue that Shanaka's got is he's not got that one second to the top two. Drop behind both of those on the um, older compound, uh, compound tires we can see. Further ahead, it's from Pig looking to make the move for the lead. Thomas Ronhar looking to put himself onto that third position as they head down towards Lacom again. It's from Puki takes the lead of the race. Thomas Ronhar takes third from Shanaka Clay. Further back, we can see Tom Manley trying to close him. He can't make a move, but he's definitely keeping in touch with the Rebel as they head through now. But very, very soon, he's now done 12 laps on that set of the mediums. Thomas Ronhar and Shanaka Clay into pit lane, along with uh, Duncan Hoffman, Reese Linton, and Tom Manley. So it seems like a lot of the moves uh, in the pit lanes are in the pit lane are being made of Otis Lawrence, but that shouldn't clear the f the fear that is stricken into the heart of Tamash Gal by Jano Otmir as he pulls to the inside line, side by side and towards. 
plunge him on. A little bit of contact. You know what, mate? Almost pushed onto the grass. In comes Otis Lawrence. Port forcing off Tamash Gao in towards the breaking zone of the bus stop. They're going to run side by side. Tamash Gao not giving this one up whatsoever. Otis Lawrence with the inside line for the next part of the chicane. And he is going to eventually make that move stick. A very scrappy run through Blanchemont. It started with Jan Orton being forced almost onto the grass. Then Otis Lawrence decided to charge on through. And Tamash Gao, I think, got a taste of his own medicine being forced off of the circuit by the McLaren Shadow Driver. But Nathan, that is what we like to call in the trade hard racing there. And it has ended up with Jan Ortmir and Otis Lawrence making their way through on Tamash Gao. Indeed, isn't it? Keen going not looking to make him to make it into provisional P2 here in this race. You also got Yano Watme looking to gain in on Ben Sabakoni as well. These two have gone to battle in the Ironman League multiple times, and here in WRT, want to be on. I know back ahead of Ben Sabakoni, definitely indeed. We can see a lot of people also vote for the medium soft as well. That'll obviously be what Isan Puki and Tiger Hardy did going into this race, but further ahead, we can see Jan Harder looking for a move to head ahead at Tamash Gar. This is Jan's first appearance here in WRT, one he's showing good performance so far here in this race. Currently ahead of his teammate uh, Thomas Ronhart, who's on that one lap. Newer tie up, but he's a little bit further back. And Jan Harley, what a move there in towards the Lafanya chicane, also known as the Piff Path chicane. Makes a move for P5. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant stuff there from the Afro Mayo. Further back, we can see Ron Har looking to gain and get past Samash Gal. Four lap. He's separating those two on the tie, so it should be an easy move there for Ron Hart to get himself ahead of Tamash Gal as they head through in towards Blanchemont. Does he choose the inside? Does he choose the outside line? He goes to the outside line, trying to set the move up in towards the chicane, but also we can see Gal gaining in on oh, Jan Halliday, wow. pushing there from Ayo down in towards the chicane. Who's going to make the move? Who will be ahead? It'll be Jan ahead of Ron Hart, ahead of Gal also. We've got Jack West getting involved. Bit of contact through. Uh, we've got Jack West on the inside line. Is he, can he get himself ahead of Tamash Gal? Yes, he can. They back down towards the one now. We've also got Shanaka Clay getting involved. He was on Polo, uh, Polo, everyone, he's in P9, looking to make a move ahead of the Alpha Terry to the inside he goes. And Tamas goes, but he's been absolutely eaten up by the field, isn't he, here, Dan? There's also got Tago Hardy retiring in the pits. As we can see as well, Ron Hall looking to make a move into P4. It's on the crawl, oh, everyone making moves further down the field as well. We've got Shanaka Clay trying to get through, and Jack West, Ron Hall ahead of Otis Lawrence, staying towards the chicane as well. We've got Tamash Gale fight with Duncan Hoffman. We've got Ishmael Fazzi fight with Benjamin McConney, all into the same part of the circuit. Brilliant battling here from all the drivers. Further back, we can see Jack West fighting with his fan Pookie. He's running to P7A, gets a better run, gets the DRS down towards Turn 1. Can he keep it? The move stick ahead of the house. He has to set the outside line. Shouldn't have better grip ahead of Jack West. Jack sends it to the inside, oh. but a con. That bit of a push there. Ishma, uh, sorry, Isfan goes wide. Jack's got the position back into P7. They head back up the hill down towards oh, Rouge. And now Isfan Puk is going to make the move in towards Rouge. Jack backs off the main contact <laughs> again. And this time Isfan gets the position ahead of Jack West. He's like, You attack me, I'll attack you back. Further back, we've got Shanaka Clay looking for a move. King Gold will drop down to third. And John Ottmey looking to take the lead ahead of Declan Barrett. Oh my goodness, Dan, there's batting absolutely everywhere. You don't know to keep your eyes on at this point. Has the very freshest tyres. Meanwhile, further back behind Ishmael Fassi, he's off screen at the minute, but he's found his way in to the train and is now going on the attack. It's Van Pukie getting through on Jan Halliday now, looking to make Otis Lawrence his next victim in this Grand Prix. You do not know who is going to come out on top in this one because with every lap that passes on by, it's Van Pukie is going to be losing speed. Here comes Thomas Rona on the attack. Three lap fresher tyres than Kean Golden Orb, and he'll make his way onto the podium with Otis Lawrence arriving onto the scene as well. Three wide almost in through Blanchemont corner. Here they go in towards now the bus stop chicane. Will Otis Lawrence send it down the inside of two of them? He'll look to the inside of the Williams car. Thomas Rona boxing him in. Off the exit now the bus stop chicane. In comes this Van Buki. Now opening up the DRS and heading down in towards Turnabout. We're riding on board with the Ferrari driver who will back off to allow for these two to duel in towards turn number one. Keen Golden Orb and Otis Lawrence still side by side. Off the exit of turn number one. Yellow flags for Jack West retiring in the pit lane. It's Van Pukie. you got to think he's going to try and get the run with no ERS whatsoever. He has to go on the attack soon because those medium tyres will not, those soft tyres will not last forever as here comes Otis Lawrence once again on the attack. Jan Ormir going for the lead as well. So much action. Five drivers battling into one corner and Thomas Ronner into second. Absolutely brilliant. There we can see Golden Dort fighting with Otis Lawrence. Further back, we've got Isfan Puka looking for a move. 3 1 in towards Bush oh. They go into Isfan up the inside contact they make. And then that can allow Jan Harde to try and stick his nose through. They're going 3 1 in towards No Name. Jan Harde into B5. Contact into the wall for many people coming through. I think Ishmael Fazi also got sent into the wall. He's entered P11. And look at them all fighting through and towards B1. That's Ishmael Fazi. I think he's got damage on the car. He's gone wide. Ishmael Fazi. Oh, goodness. What it could have been. 
for him in this race without strategy. That is it all done and dusted. Situations, Jan Ortmeer, 86%. Thomas Ronhar, 66. Declan Barrett, very low on the battery with 25. Even lower for Isvan Puki, who's down the inside through Ravage. Brilliant move from Isvan Puki there to get himself up into third. And now there's two oh, more contact. drivers. Russian Akaklea pulls it around. He had a bit of contact there. So it's cut you off. And then at no name with Duncan Hoffman. He drops down to P17. Big, big shame for him. Oh, what, a, what a shame. He had a bit of contact. He went around the outside and unfortunately got clipped by the Aston Martins. Do everything he can to defend from his fellow countrymen. The two Dutch drivers looking to do battle. It's a civil war on the final lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. Jan Ortman with a three-tenth advantage ahead of Thomas Ronhaar. Heading up the hill for the final time in this race. This is the moment for Thomas Ronhaar to go on the attack as he'll close to the rear following the wheel tracks then dart to the inside line on the back of Jan Ortmeer to take the lead heading in towards the Le Comte chicane for the final time in this Grand Prix but Jan Ortmeer will not give up here he's still got 37% in the battery Thomas Ronhaar though with 60% is that the battle done and dusted Jan Ortmeer really can't go back on the attack Thomas Ronhaar might have sealed the deal he might have done it's all down to what Jano can do down towards Bonchamot Corner. That's the last chance he's got any way of making a move in this race to get himself ahead of Thomas Ronhaar. He's got to kind of concede, concede his battery through this part of the section. If he wants to have enough to try and fight down, you can see he's burning some there to get a good run towards Chicane Kai Pearson with the penalty in this race. That'll drop him outside of the points even further, further back. We could see earlier on that with Jan Halliday looking to make a move on Declan Barrett. Couldn't make a move work. But look at this gap between Thomas and Jano. Thomas has been dispatched. He's got an eight tenth gap, nine tenth gap as they come through out of of Curve to pull Fred down towards Bunch I don't think there's anything that Yano can do here, Dan. No, it doesn't look like it. Thomas Ronhaar yet to score a podium in this season. He's finished third here before in season 14, but he's going to capture the gold in season 16. 18th in the points, no longer for Thomas Ronhaar. It's going to be a big haul of 25 as he comes across the line. He will take the win here in Belgium. Jan Ortmeer will take second. It's not quite the win, but with it, will capture the championship lead ahead of Ish. Ishmael Fassi, who doesn't finish in this Grand Prix, and it is Istvan Puki holding to his soft tyres to the very end with a fantastic strategy to put himself in to third position.